Hi friends, it's Becky, and today we're going to do part two of a three-part series that I am using some Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box from The Wizard of Oz. This was the September bead box, and this was themed on Wizard of Oz, and so I am creating three different projects using beads, and it's themed on three of the characters. I've already done part one, which was Dorothy, and I will put a link to that in the description below. Once I've done part three, I'll also add that to this description below. This is part three, and this is the one, or part two, and this is the one that we're going to do Glinda, because we've got this beautiful Glinda boho bead, and some pink pink beads, and some champagne beads, and some silver hearts, and some of these came from other supporting character um, uh, mixes, um, but we're going to be putting them all together, and I'm going to be incorporating this pink leather chain. This is from Silver Silk, and it is this sort of uh, tan-colored leather cord with some pink wire knitted over it, and so we're going to be using this to string on some dangles and I'm going to be using some 22 gauge wire to make my dangles and then we're going to be finishing it off with some silver silk findings for that leather chain and a toggle clasp from my stash. The tools that I'm going to be using for forming my dangles I want to make sure that the loop is going to be big enough to fit over this leather chain so I'm going to be using my six-step bail making pliers when I'm making my loops on my dangles. Um, some of these will be able to fit just fine. There'll be little spacers between the dangles. And then I'm also using some wire cutters. These are some flush cutters and some chain nose pliers. And those are my tools. So let's get started with some of these beads. And let's start making some dangles. I've already started sort of spreading these out where I want them to go. All right, I'm gonna start with this one and our dangles are going to be kind of fun because, all right, I'm just warming up my wire and straightening it with my fingers before we get started. I'm gonna put my beads on in the order that I want them to be on for this dangle. I'm using some little spacers in between some of my bigger beads Make that little spacer between my boho bead and this heart. Another spacer between my heart and this round bubble bead. And now I'm going to make my loop up here at the top. And once again, I'm going to use my six step veil making pliers so that I can make sure that I have a uniform size in my loop that I'm making. And so I'm going to bend this back and then bring it around that loop that I'm using. It's the third step down, one, two, three, or fourth step from the largest. Actually, no, one, four, yeah. And then once I've got that loop made, I can hold on to it, start wrapping this wire this way. This wire wrap doesn't need to be super neat because we're going to be wrapping over it when we come up the other way. I want some extra fancy wire wrapped dangles. So to fancy this up, let's see, I'm going to want about that much. It's about one, two, plus a little extra of the length of this. That's because we're going to be curving this wire around these beads. All right, so this is going to be the front or back, one of the two. I need to make a decision. And I'm going to bring this up like that. Pinch it between a couple of these pearls and then wrap it around my stem. And I'm going to bring it up around the front of this heart, wrap it around the stem, bring it up around my bubble, and then do a wrap all the way up here. 
and then all the way back down for a messy wrap like that. Gotta cut off my excess and I'm gonna repeat this several times with y'all or maybe what I'll do is I will do a second one and then just for repetition sake and then we'll do the rest of the dangles and meet you back here after I've made all of them let me see I think some of my friends really enjoy just hanging out with me while I'm making things so why don't we make all of them together and if it is taking too long and you'd like to jump to the part where we put these together I'll put a timestamp that you can jump to after the dangles are made so you can just forward fast forward onto that how about that and that way if some of you want to just hang out and work on your projects while I'm making this you can do that and we can just spend some time together I think that's going to be probably the best way to do this all right so same thing I bend this back so that when I make my loop it will center it and I just use my finger to push it over the top of that loop that I'm using I open this up rotate it so that it's out of the way and then bring my wire across my loop like that that's how you make a loop and you can hold on to the loop and I use my fingers to bend this um, 22 gauge wire is pretty soft so it doesn't take a lot of effort but if you want to use a different um, tool or if it's hard on your fingers you can definitely use pliers to wrap and let's go ahead and cut this off. All right, so for this one, and I'm gonna make two of these the same way. I didn't put them on before I started this, so I'm hoping I have enough room on here. But the bubble's going to be at the top with a spacer and then a heart. And then, a bead cap, one of these discos, and another bead cap, like that. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other. I'm going to hold on to my beads and pull this up towards the front and then pinch the bottom here and wrap it around pinch it against the, um, the heart, wrap it around, and then bring it up around that, and then back down for my messy wrap. Like that. is dangle number two those are gonna look so great so now I want another one just like that let's do it the other way this time where I put the beads on the wire first before I cut it maybe we won't be cutting too much extra wire and so this way bead caps around my disco and then my heart these metal hearts came from one of the um, bead strands. I think it was for the, was it for the Tin Man? It might have been for the Tin Man. There we go. Now this loop is going to go a little bit faster because I don't think I have to describe it multiple times.
Oops. This Belinda was all silver and bubbles and pink. One, two, three. All right, let's get a couple more. Now these ones are going to be smaller ones. Oh, wait, was that one one or was that going to be an extra? I think that one's an extra. All right, a couple of these smaller ones. spacers and then these smaller heart ones yes there we go all right yes perfect Seven, two, one, two, one, two. okay so that's three of those so let's do a big one a daisy spacer and then a little one just like that and now I'm going to use again the same loop on my looper so that this loop is big enough to fit to string onto my um, leather chain so that when we put all these whoops I went the wrong way <laughs> when we put all of those together, um, it will it will all fit and will all string on just fine. So I'm going to be stringing the dangles onto the leather chain, and the leather chain will hold them up. Whoop. Okay, so double that plus a little extra for wrapping. going to go through one of those spokes and then around and then up here like that and up and then back down perfect now one thing I'm going to want to make sure of when I am stringing them on is that the wire wrap part is facing forward so we can see it and I am doing my wrap all in the same direction so I don't have to worry about is it the the right way or the wrong way or if we're facing out in different directions we're all just going to go in the same direction on this and you could if you wanted to make it mirrored between these two instead of wrapping to the right wrap to the left when you're doing it it's very easy to turn it around so you get a mirrored bit. Y'all, I think these two are going to be earrings, actually. Let's make those two earrings. I'm going to just push those aside so that I keep them separate. Because I think this is going to be enough, just as it is, to have these dangles on there. Yep. Okay, so I need to make those two and then we'll make some earrings. Just made that decision. You're allowed to make decisions halfway through whatever you're making or even at the end. Changing our mind is like one of our prerogatives as creators. a little much. Push these up. One extra. Okay. Up between the spokes. That way that won't spin. Around the front and then up to the top. We'll make earrings after we make our necklace. I think that's a good idea. Right, and then the 
these two. Yeah, I think I want it like that. Spacer, and then this cross bead. I don't know what that one was from. Maybe it was the lion one. It might have been lion. up towards the front in between our beads Ooh, this one's nice to wrap around because it's got that those corners up and back down to make it messy I really love the faceting on this one. It is so sparkly. Got it like that. These are going to work so well. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. One more, one more, and then we can start putting this together. All right. Let's put that on there. And this one. make our loop. Doesn't need to be too big. It's big enough to go around the leather. Now this leather chain was um, kind of a custom chain. It's not currently available in the shop, um, but it's possible that Neely may make another pink chain in the future. Um, he does a lot of custom one-off chains, and you can usually find those in the pop-up shop when he does them. And I usually like to grab one of them because sometimes even if I don't have a use for them right when they're listed like this one I will find a use for them later this might have been one of the chains that he made for the Jesse James beads collaboration where he was making chain to go with the magical mystery bead boxes that might have been one of those maybe the wildflower one it could have been um, but there wasn't one for the Wizard of Oz, so there are plenty of things that would work, though, just as well. All right, let's start stringing this guy on. I already have this the length that I want it, so I don't need to um, cut it at this point. If I did cut it, I can just use wire cutters for that. Let me pull out my um, measuring tape so that you know how much of this leather chain I am using. Eighteen inches. So that will make about a nineteen inch necklace once I've got the other bits and pieces attached to it. In fact, let's go ahead and attach one 
of the findings here. You can do that by getting the leather chain into the silver silk cord ends. These are for um, both the leather chain, the capture chain, and the pearlesque chain. They all fit very nicely in here. It has a little lip that will bite into the leather chain when it's closed and hold it firmly. So all I'm doing right now, making sure I don't have any wire poking out the sides, making sure this is deep in there. And I usually like to use my um, flat nose pliers to close these but those have gone walkies, so I'm just pushing it um, near the back of my chain nose pliers so that the full width of it is on here. While I give it a squeeze, and I always like to test to make sure that it is good and closed, and I do have a little bit of wire poking out the side there, so I'm just going to clean that up with my wires there. And there we go. So that is one end done. I'm going to start my stringing. Start with this one and then a spacer. And these are going to swing along a little bit. These spacers know these will fit. There we go. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I, I need effort, so I'm holding it close to my chest while I move this along. All right. This is going to scooch along. These spacers will hold them where I want them to be. And I will readjust these as, as I go. But the spacers are gonna be the things that hold them, either in the center or just a little ways away from the center. Otherwise, they'll be swinging free. part does take some effort. Okay. Dang it. Be careful. It is wire <laughs> that we are playing around with here on the end. I'm probably going to have to... Oh. What is the word? Let's get these strung on and then I can adjust them from there. Nicely, they will dangle like that. So nice. Yeah, I'm probably going to need to cut this again before I put it in its crimp. There's some little bits of wire that are dangling that I need to get rid of. Spacer. A little wiggle will help. Let's get these on and then we can do our adjustments after that. Where's my center? Let's scooch you guys over a little bit because that 
That's the middle. We'll get the spacing a little bit easier once we get the rest of these guys on here. You're facing the wrong way. Oh, buddy. Look at that. <sighs> okay. Once these are all on the way that they're facing, they're not coming off again. There we go. That's good, good, good. All right. the last spacer and then I can string my last dangle on facing the right way Becky there we go all right how's that spacing when it is being worn kind of like the way that, that hangs but is it even it is not even. I'm going to need to move these guys over a little bit more. Okay. Mm, that's too, too much space, I think. Let's scooch you just a little. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I don't want them to be spread out too much. Okay. Yes, that will be good. Let's get these two scooched down. Like that. Like that. Okay. I'm going to finish this up by getting the other end of my chain on that is facing out that way. Let's get this one facing that way. Scooch it all the way back. Test it. There's a little bit of wire poking out. Let's cut that off. There we go. Now we can do toggle clasp. I've got two jump rings for the toggle part because I like for it to be a little more, um, to have a little more wiggly wiggleness. Is that a word? Maybe. Articulation. I like for it to have more articulation on the toggle part of the toggle clasp. So I'm going to just put this first jump ring on there and then the second jump ring. We'll loop into the finding here. And then that first jump ring that I added on the toggle. There we go. Close the jump ring. See, I 
it gives me a little extra movement. And here we go. One more. Let's get our wire out and make some earrings. Oop. As soon as I'm done with this. Why are you being difficult? What did I ever do to you? There we go. <sighs> Friend! I don't know what you think you're doing. That's not where you go. You go on here. Do you guys ever have things just aren't working right kind of days? Let's close this up before it tries to make a break for it again. All right. old I sort of absolutely love this that's such a fantastic thing and these spacers were perfect a perfect fit on that leather chain they went on but then they stay where you put them and that just makes it so much nicer to have some space between my dangles so much easier all right let's set you over here grab some of that 22 gauge wire where did it go let's make a couple of ear wires first using the smallest of my um, loops on the six step looper. And then I'm gonna use the second largest for the ear part. I want the loops that I just made to be facing away from the part that I'm going to wrap around. So I'm just gonna push this around there like that. And use my chain nose pliers to make a little bit of a bend right there. And snip that off flush. I will use some um, metal files to smooth out those edges before I put them in any ears. But I am going to just close this up and then give this a healthy smush with my pliers to help work harden it. I'm going to do the same thing here on this bendy part of the earring. Make sure that's good and closed. Smush. Smush. Now I have some ear wires. And I can make a couple of earrings to go with this. I'll make one earring with you and then I'll make the second one on my own. So let's start with the bottom and I'm going to wrap it the same way I did the others. Let's go ahead and make a little loop up here at the top. I'm just going to bend this back and use my smallest loop because it doesn't have to go over any leather chain. So I can use a small loop. And I'm going to do a little wrap here. It doesn't have to be pretty. So we're going to cover it up with this after we bend this up towards the top. And then pinching this, 
bring this down between these two beads. Still pinching that. Then up across the heart. And I'm just going to wrap around there. A nice fat wrap. Just like that. Snip. And tuck. And put it on the ear wire. And I have some Glinda earrings too. These are simple. Simple yet pretty. And they go perfectly with my Glinda necklace. She was all about sparkles and bubbles and coming down in a bubble and pink and frilly and frou-frou. That was our Glinda. All right. So this concludes part two of my three-part series. I am going to do part three next. And if you missed part one, again, I will have links to all three parts in the descriptions for each of my videos so that you can get caught up or watch all of them if you'd like. I love the way this hangs. These are such pretty sparkly dangles. All right, so look forward to part three. Happy beating, friends.